So I've got 150 grams of strong bread flour. I've got 150 grams of water and then a little pinch of instant yeast. All we're gonna do is just mix that until it's combined and then I'm gonna stick a lid on it and leave it out on my counter overnight and that will start off our bread tomorrow. So 24 hours later, I have got 400 grams of bread flour. We're chucking in three grams of yeast into that. 240 grams of water. I've got my ripe poolish that we made yesterday. So that's all gonna go in. Look at that. The recipe calls for 10 grams of something called diastatic malt powder. I don't think you're gonna have that. I don't have that. So I am, I don't wanna sort of like completely ignore the step. But at the same time, I don't really want to buy like things like that that I'm only ever going to use for this one bread recipe. So here's what I'm doing. It is supposed to bring improvements to the colour and the flavour. So what I'm actually going to do is use the same amount, 10 grams, of Dove's Farm Organic Whole wholemeal spelt flour and then 11 grams of salt. Now I'm going to get my dough hook on and we are going to give this a mix on a fairly low speed. <laughs> It's pretty strong, so that is now going to come out into a bowl and I'm going to cover that and give it half an hour. We're going to go in for a strength building fold now. Just work your way all the way around. Starting to see some bubbles developing in there now. Once you've gone all the way around, give that a flip onto its seams and then start shaping that. Just tuck underneath it and come round. Once you're happy with that, cover it over again and we're gonna come back in about an hour and do a pre-shape. So, now I'm gonna separate this into four. Looking for them to be about 230 grams each. And you can see that that's still quite a wet dough, which I don't find the easiest to work with. I don't think many home chefs do, but let's just give that a pull out and a tug in. And then we will fold that over on itself, get that seam onto the bottom start giving it a pre-shape. Those are now gonna rest covered for about 15 minutes just to let the gluten relax. I'm gonna cover them up for 45 minutes to a, an hour and 10 for that final proofing stage. I'll first to brush these with a little bit of water. And then I'm just gonna, with a sharp knife, I'm just gonna score those a few times. So we're gonna do the first part of this bake with a cast iron cover. It ended up tasting a lot bloody nicer than it looked. So the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that I had four dough balls, but I only made two baguettes. I'm having another go, sticking it in my fan oven, and I'm just gonna pop this over the top of it to get that bit of steam going. Rustic AF. Nice knock to it, nice bit of browning. Right now, I reckon all you really care about was what does this taste like? So, let's give it a, oh, it's a nice crunch to it. I got a little bit of this homemade butter that we did the other day. That is lush. It's crispy on the outside, but not so much that it's gonna cut your mouth up. Bread inside is creamy almost, really nice. So, is it a lot of faff? Yes, it is. Does it taste better than anything I've bought in the shop? Yes, it does. Would I do it again? Absolutely, not all the time because it is a faff, but I would definitely have another crack. Anyway, latest potatoes, off your pop while I have a nosh. <laughs> 